everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Lomesh Tata. I'm the Vice President of Growth at the Definity Foundation. And here with me, we have our CTO, Jan Kamanesh. Hey, Jan. Welcome. Hey, Lomesh. Hi, everybody. So, Hong Kong. Here we are in Hong Kong at uh, the uh, Web3 Ed Summit. Um, what brings you here? Well, we have our new uh, OEC wallet and do some airdrops to, to demonstrate that now actually you can have uh, ICP on Ethereum and also you can have like Ethereum uh, tokens on the internet computer or actually hold them on the internet computer. Wow, you said quite a few things. OEC wallet, Ethereum, um, um, internet computer, Ethereum and uh, yeah, let's start with that. Let's let's start with OEC. What, what is the OEC wallet? So OEC wallet is like a, like a showcase that uh, demonstrates uh, the uh, threshold signature capabilities or chain key signing capabilities of the internet computer. Mm -hmm. So you could just you know take any browser, go to OEC.com, and then uh, you, you already connected to a smart contract on the internet computer that implements like a full blown wallet. So when you say wallet, right? So uh, are you saying the wallet is basically only within the browser? You don't need, need to install any plugin. You don't need to download any app. Is that what it is? Yeah, totally. So it's the, like a wallet implemented by a smart contract on the internet computer, and, and so like because uh, smart contracts on the internet computer can directly be accessed from users' browsers, users can just use a browser connect uh, to that smart contract. Wow, that's so cool. And uh, you also said something about Ethereum. So what does this wallet hold? Right, so now with the wallet, you, you can log in with like internet identity. So that's like a blockchain authentication mechanism that uses your, your phone's uh, you know, biometric uh, key unlock uh, system. So with that, you, you authenticate yourself uh, to that uh, wallet smart contract. And then the wallet smart contract will, for you, generate an Ethereum public key and well, essentially like a, uh, an account of that wallet or like, like a, your own wallet that has that uh, public key. And now as you have an Ethereum public key like in that smart contract that is yours, of course you can ha like, have like any token that uh, you can hold with an Ethereum public key. Awesome, so, so, so what I heard was like you essentially can create a wallet within the browser completely. Uh, you essentially do not need to download anything. You don't need any like plugin, and you can hold multiple assets: ICP, Ethereum, and like all the ERC twenties. Exactly, and so you, normally when you have like a you know like, like let's say MetaMask or wallet like that, you have to install uh, like a plugin for your browser, right? And then uh, you have to remember some seed phrase and whatnot. Here, you don't have to do any any of that. It's like the, the key is hold like on the chain, like managed by the chain, totally secure fashion because it's like multi-party cryptography, like state-of-the-art cryptography. Hmm. And you know, even across all, all of your devices, just like uh, as long as your device has the security chip, you're good to go. So no key management there. So now, like when you mentioned MetaMask, right? So MetaMask is like probably the most popular wallet on Ethereum today. Um, how does, is this like a complementary solution to that? Is this like a orthogonal to that? How does OIC uh, work uh, relative to what MetaMask is? Well, it's a total replacement, right? You don't need MetaMask, it's just all you need, a browser, you don't have to install, as we said, no, no plugin, no extension, nothing like that. It's just all you need is a device in the browser and, and you're good to go to enter crypto, right? So you log in there and then you can make Ethereum transactions. You can hold all, all the tokens there that there is, you can send them around. And you can also eventually, because that's not, not done yet right now, but of course you can also have like all the assets also on, on the internet computer. You know, like, a, like a, a dual kind of uh, principle here. And then you can even transact them like on the uh, intercomputer protocol in like a uh, far cheaper way. Like in Ethereum, it costs like five dollars if you're lucky, twenty dollars if you're less lucky. On the internet computer, if, if you transact tokens there, it's like by far cheaper. It's like it's a, a fraction of a dollar even. Yeah, actually, that's a very interesting thing, right? So I mean, I'm a very active like DeFi DGen. I mean, I'm uh, actively on most of the Ethereum dexes. But when I think about like the business models or some of these, like so, for example, if you think about a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, um, as the like as the attention to like uh, crypto grows, 
so does like the network fee on Ethereum. That means that for a trade that I normally spend 50 cents on Uniswap, now all of a sudden becomes $50. So if you think from a perspective of an application, um, it is like counterintuitive to like their business model. As they will find more traction, they will have a lot more friction uh, of users trying to do so. So you mentioned of all this stuff about, okay, how does the internet computer actually solve this problem uh, where we have the reverse cash fee and you can like basically bring Ethereum, ERC20, even Bitcoin onto the internet computer network. So can you tell me more about it? Right, so, so I think the idea here is that uh, like, uh, like OIC or like wallets that are built in a similar way on the internet computer and we have like a few more like Asterix or NFID and other wallets who actually do the same thing. So you can, uh, and we, we did this this morning, right? So, so we uh, fire up Uniswap with Wallet Connect, connect the OIC wallet, right? And so you can on the one hand transact your, your stuff on Ethereum or the, then, uh, and because that's uh, what is to come, you could also do the same transactions on uh, the internet computer, right? And so right, right now, when I see there's of course uh, much more liquidity, there's more, more tokens to trade, but eventually people will realize if you do the same thing on the internet computer, it's like far cheaper, right? Like, for, for fewer transaction fees, and therefore the data will also like, have some liquidity, some more DeFi, or actually a native uh, on the internet computer protocol. Yeah, I think you, you said far cheaper fee, but actually like it's practically zero from an end user perspective because of our reverse cast model where uh, as a developer, as a DEX, I can choose to pay for the computation so that my users don't have to, right? So which means that you can really build a DEX on internet computer that can trade between Ethereum, ERC20, uh, Bitcoin, ICP, and various assets uh, with pretty much zero gas fee from end user perspective. Yeah, totally. So, like uh, on ICP, but also the typical model is that transaction fees are like yeah. standard. That they don't uh, like vary. It's like fixed fees. Yeah. And so, for instance, if I send you an ICP, it would call, cost me like a thousandth of a dollar. So, yeah, nobody really cares, right? But of course, there is some some fee there. Also, just to make, make sure uh, you come to DDoS attacks and all of that. So it's, it's more like, like a security feature than, than anything else, really. Very cool. Uh, there's one thing you mentioned at the start of like our discussion. You mentioned something about ECDSA. Uh, so can you break it down like in simple words for let's say people who are not familiar with IC today? Uh, what does this mean? How is this important? And how does it enable us for creating this Bitcoin and Ethereum integration uh, on the internet computer? Right. So ECDSA is really the, the like elliptic curve digital standard signing algorithm right so that's like a standard for for signing doing cryptographic signatures like a, like a very old standard by now is that is that only something that we on ic use is that something that's used for like by other chains or like well actually it's, it's used by the whole industry right when like not only blockchain but like uh, every browser when they do tls there's dsa signatures in there so essentially that and in the the blockchain area there's the ecdsa is like the most popular one there, there's schnorr but these are like two standard signature schemes that like everybody uses and you know like in order to sign you need to have a cryptographic like a secret key and, and, and all of that now as soon as you have a secret key it's like tedious to manage so that's why like on the in the computer we have like a distributed signing protocol where that secret key actually never exists but like uh, it's sort of shared among like, uh, like de designated nodes on the internet computer, and so they together can then produce signatures. And so that's how now for, for this wallet or, or what we implemented is that we have like a, a distributed signing algorithm. Now users don't have to manage all those keys, but actually the internet computer protocol, the nodes jointly manage the key for you. So it's like a, an HSM, like, like a hardware security model module that like banks use, but done in, in a much better way because now you, you distribute decentralized that and that's actually way more secure. Yeah, so I was reading about the OIC uh, like blog that we essentially published and we, we talked about network custody. So that's basically, I believe, what you mean by that each of the nodes in the network um, or in, in that subnet, they essentially hold a, cust a, a small slice of the private key and they, a threshold number of them need to come together to create the signature. So when it comes in the context of OIC Wallet, that means like as an end user, you don't really need to manage uh, your like key material and you can essentially still hold custody of 
like lots of different assets from Bitcoin, Ethereum to to various uh, ERC twenties and ICP and so on. Yeah, exactly. You know, all as you said, right? All you need in order to like have this uh, signing capabilities is like a phone and connect to with your browser to the internet computer, and there you go. You have it. You can uh, like enter the world of crypto, buy tokens, sell tokens, trade tokens, and of course, like. Tokens is only like a small portion of what you, what you can do in total on the internet computer. It's like way more. But I guess today we're just talking about these wallets, showing that uh, with the internet computer you can also participate in the Ethereum ecosystem. It demonstrates that like with the internet computer protocol you can uh, interact with the Ethereum ecosystem. And just holding ETH is like one way to do that. I mean, there's like of course much more you can do. Since you can sign any, not with OISI obviously, but like with a smart contract on the end of the computer, you can sign any transaction with respect to an Ethereum key and then submit that to Ethereum and then vice versa, right? You can really interact with, uh, with that because uh, smart contracts on the end of the computer can like call out and call in, mm. it'll be called in, right? And so with that, they can actually interact with the Ethereum blockchain. And that's what uh, I guess we call Ethereum integration that we're working on. We've already done that for, for the Bitcoin network, so you can also hold Bitcoin like that, and then uh, you know, like either transact Bitcoin way cheaper on the internet computer, or then also you know, like go out and transact on the Bitcoin network, which again is like much more expensive. And I guess we, we did that before, right? I sent yeah, yeah, yeah. you some some Bitcoin on yeah. Open Chat, and like two seconds later, you, you were very happily because you got some Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank from you. Me. I've been getting a lot of the Bitcoin from Jan today, so <laughs> I feel like a rich man already. So one very interesting thing I noticed in the OIC wallet was this um, ICP on token on Ethereum. So this is very new. So this is basically we are we are not talking about like ICP, which is on ICP. Uh, uh, blockchain, but we are talking about an ICP token on Ethereum. Tell me more about it. Right, so that's like, like yet another thing we've done uh, like in, in the last few uh, weeks and days, really. So we, we've done an ERC20 contract, uh, like a, to a token contract on Ethereum that, that holds like ICP. So we have like ICP tokens there that mm -hmm. we just launched on Ethereum. And the idea is that there's like on, a, on the internet computer, there's another like a internet computer smart contract that has some ICP. And whenever that one receives some ICP, it will, it will mint uh, like one ICP on, on the ERC20 contract and vice versa, right? But of course, so if you send the, it there, it remembers your Ethereum public key, and it will then send the uh, ICP on Ethereum to, to that public key, and vice versa. Right? So you always have to, when when you do these transactions, attach uh, your your address on the other network. And, and this is much secure than a, like a traditional bridge, in the sense that your IC smart contract is holding the custody of the ICP, and then there is smart contract on Ethereum where you can do like, are, are you also using the threshold ECDS signature for uh, implementing this? Yeah, or? totally. I mean, th there's no bridge here, right? So yeah, it, yeah, there's like the, the Ethereum smart contract, the internet computer smart contract that interact, right? And, and the, the uh, smart contract on the internet computer again uses this threshold keychain signing uh, algorithms and can hold the Ethereum keys uh, for for the contract. Wow, so so no Ethereum. intermediary and you can basically beam ICP onto Ethereum for use on like, like be stored in the OIC wallet, but maybe also potentially be traded on uh, DEXs like Uniswap and so on and so forth. Yeah, totally. And, and that, I believe, is something that uh, the team is working on making it possible for basically any token on the internet computer where ICRC1 tokens like, I mean, our SNS, like DAO tokens, Bitcoin, so on and so forth. Right, I mean, so there's two directions here, right? Like all, all the like tokens that are native to the internet computer can be like reflected, or have a twin, uh, like a correspondence on, on Ethereum. But really, like with that technology, like any other EVM EVM chain, right? So that also means that the internet computer can sort of be, you know, like the, the, the gate to, to all the other chains. You can have like one chain, have some tokens there, put it over, you know, twin it over to the internet computer, back to that chain, and so on and so forth, right? It's really the, the whole uh, universe of different tokens on blockchain that with that uh, 
Can it be EVM blockchains with that technology that we can... Wow, this is super cool. So basically what we... Uh, so I, I think the, another thing I wanted to ask you, right? So in my understanding, this is more of a showcase of the capabilities of the internet computer, YC wallet, and we are expecting more teams in the ecosystem to basically use this as a, as a showcase, as a template. Uh, as you mentioned, some wallets like AstroX, NFID, Plug, and so on and so forth, they can basically look at this model and say, okay, they can build this uh, multi-chain interoperability between Ethereum and uh, IC tokens uh, in, in, in this form of showcase. Is that is that how it Yeah, goes? totally. I mean, this is like all the code is open source. It's, it's really like a showcase trying to inspire the community, uh, Ethereum community, the internet computer, uh, the ICP community. So to like pick this up and, and build and go crazy with it, there's so many possibilities. I'm saying like a wallet is like just the most straightforward one, but there's like way more things you can do uh, around that. Uh, we, we have like Helix uh, who got uh, like uh, a prize uh, like, like just early this year about the be best decks. I mean, they're about to launch. They're also using this technology, right? So so that you can actually have like a DEX on the internet computer that, that uh, where you can trade all these tokens from the other chains. They're exactly also using this technology. So it's, it's very, very powerful. Wow, very cool. I think it's, um, it's very impressive. We're talking about the first browser-based wallet, which does not require any download, does not require any plugins uh, to be installed on, let's say, Chrome or so on and so forth. Uh, you can, like, basically, you don't need, as a user, you don't need to store the key material no or seed and phrase, no seed remember, phrase. You just use your somewhere. biometrics, log into the app, uh, uh, to, to the to the browser uh, like uh, web page, and you can essentially have access and custody of Ethereum, soon Bitcoin, and IC tokens all in all in one go. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, guys, try it out. Like, go to OIC.com, uh, try it out, and also look at the source code that's also linked from from there, and uh, go crazy, start building. Awesome. Thank you, Jan. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Lois. Thank you.